Frogs are among the most sensitive animals to environmental change. Known as bioindicators, these canaries in the coal mine, as it were, have suffered from the impacts of city and farming expansion in southeast Queensland. With the removal of vegetation along the previously crystal clear waters of our lowland streams, surface runoff of loose soil and pollutants has increased, clogging and contaminating their waterways. However, in the Gold Coast hinterland, a network of local citizen scientists are making their mark in a profound effort to document and map what remains. This is the story of the Cascade Tree Frog. Dr. Claire Morrison from Griffith University. I'm a lecturer in ecology and a frog biologist. Tonight we're here at Austinville. We're about to go frogging as part of the BioBlitz program. One of the functions of the BioBlitz is to map and monitor populations of rare and threatened species. And that includes for frogs, the vulnerable Littoria pearsoniana or cascade tree frog. The cascade tree frog is a really small, slender frog. It can range from a really bright, vivid green in color to a more brown, dusky golden color or something in between, depending on where you are. They're usually active between, say, about September and April every year. And the males will call to attract females. They lay their eggs in little ponds or within the stream next to fast flowing streams and the eggs are attached to vegetation within the water. After a couple of days they hatch into tadpoles and a couple of months later they hatch into metamorphs. During the winter males and females often aggregate together in humid moist hidey holes next to the rivers and they wait until the next breeding season when they all emerge and start feeding and breeding again. You can find them from northern New South Wales up into Queensland. It has fairly specific habitat requirements in that it likes wet rainforest habitats and wet sclerophyll habitats and only occurs in sparse flowing streams found within those different habitats. This means that the water needs to be clean and can't be polluted with any agricultural runoff or pollutants of any other kind. The Cascade tree frog is listed as near threatened under the IUCN Red List and is listed as vulnerable in Queensland. In the 1970s and 80s, populations of the Cascade tree frog declined quite dramatically and this is mainly thought to be because of the chytrid fungus. The chytrid fungus is a fungus that attacks the skin of amphibians and other related species. It essentially thickens the skin which makes it very hard for the frogs to respire through their skin and eventually leads to their death. Today, the main threats still include chytrid but also include habitat fragmentation and loss and pollution from runoff in agriculture and other developments. This impact is mainly through the effects on tadpoles as they need clean water in order to develop. There are a number of different things that we can do to help protect the cascade tree frog, including citizen science programs such as BioBlitz. Within the BioBlitz, there are a number of different activities, including frogging. And when we're out frogging, we go to different creeks and streams within our local area and we record the species that are found there. It's a fun, exciting way to involve everybody and let them know what's happening in their own backyards. G'day folks, my name's Paul Donachu. I work for Healthy Land and Water, which is the natural resource management group for South East Queensland. So we're here today at the Gold Coast BioBlitz uh, doing a really fascinating 24-hour wildlife survey. And one of the critters we're actually looking for is the cascade tree frog. We know that it's here in the valley and what we're trying to do is actually find more populations of that species. One of the most important things about the Gold Coast BioBlitz is for people to actually get out in the environment and have fun to actually look for things that we haven't found before, but along the way to just really enjoy themselves while they're out in the bush. One of the other really important things about the BioBlitz is that if we do find new populations of rare species, that can only help us manage those species in the future. So BioBlitz is an amazing process that has been used in lots of other parts of the world. We're now starting to see it really take off in Australia. So the Gold Coast BioBlitz is actually an annual event. This is the first one in a series of three that we've planned. The next two will be at Springbrook and Numanbar Valley. But we really put it out there as an invitation to you all to come and join us and discover some of the really rare species on the Gold Coast. My name's Stephen Gill and I'm from the Gold Coast Catchment Association. One of the most sensitive and indicative of environmental quality is that of frogs. And frogs are the primary indicator, therefore we take a great deal of time to see them, identify them, record them. A key feature of today's findings is that they are directly 
transferred to the databases that are held by City of Gold Coast and the relevant state government departments so that anything that is planned for this particular valley is run past those parameters to ensure that it doesn't endanger the creatures that we're trying to protect. The idea is to preserve the environment as naturally as possible, repair any damage that's remediated if we can, and ensure that it is preserved for future generations to enjoy and for many generations of frogs to enjoy. It is very important that the public themselves, if they have any connection to the environment, come and join in these events, join in the fun. Yes, we always have fun, but this is valid scientific data that we're using to form future decisions on what we do with this wonderful environment. Hi, I'm John Pumpers. I've been photographing frogs for over 20 years and today we're here in my backyard in the hinterland. I've got these ponds that are made out of plastic. It's recycled plastic actually and they're over 30 centimetres tall and they're that height because that stops cane toads from jumping in because they can't jump more than about 30 centimetres. This is something that anyone can do. All you need is a container to put water in. You can use recycled plastic tubs like these or you can use an old bathtub anything that will hold water that is 30 centimeters tall if you don't like the look of this sort of pond then you can always sink a pond in the ground you've just got to put a fence that's at least 30 centimeters high people's main concern with these ponds is mosquitoes and you can either control those manually like i do or you can get some small fish like native blue eyes or rainbow fish and put them in. This beautiful little tree frog really needs our help. You can be part of the solution by participating in programs such as BioBlitz like we've seen here tonight, or if you've got your own land, why not build yourself a cane toad proof pond for frogs? Using these really simple strategies, we can come together and protect this really important frog from extinction. Mm -hmm.